Hello crafty friends, welcome to today's Stamping September video. Today I'm going to create a birthday card for you featuring birthday candles. And I've got a couple of candle stamps that I'm going to use on my first run through. Then I'm going to use a stamp from this set to create some candles. And then I'll show you another way of creating candle stamps if you haven't got anything suitable that is shop bought. First up, we're going to use these two candle stamps, and these were from a random set that I picked up at a charity shop. I don't know the name of the manufacturers. So I've got a piece of smooth white cardstock. This is Bristol card. It's a nice white. It's the Windsor and Newton one. I've popped it in my stamp positioner, and I'm going to arrange my candles, just two of them here, because we're going to do some repeat stamping. They're slightly wonky. They're not perfectly straight but that's how I want them. For my stamping today I'm going to use Catherine Pooler inks. These are all, let's have a look, red oranges, oranges, orange yellows and reds and they're from the party collection. These are the bright ones so they're great for party, birthday, candle theme cards and I'm just gonna ink up my stamps and stamp some images. So that was Bellini. And I'm going to move this down a little bit. Now maybe, let's have a look, three centimetres. Yeah, I think that will do. And we will, hmm, I think we'll do Bellini again. We'll do a row of Bellini. And I think that will do. Oops, nearly dropped that on there. <laughs> Haven't gone all the way to the end, but that's fine. I'm going to clean off my stamps and my door now, give those a bit of a dry and then I'm going to start at this end. I think I'm going to try and get this one in a similar amount and I think some tiara which is an orange yellow. We'll go back up three centimetres. The amount you move your candles each time will very much depend on the size of cards you're making, the size of candles, the number of repeats you want. And we'll go all the way up to the top for that one. I want to bring in a third colour and I'm going to use these to fill in some of the gaps but also to overlay a little bit. And we'll go Coral Cabana, which is a red orange. So we've got an orange, an orange yellow and a red orange. They're analogous colours, which means they're near each other on the colour wheel. And they won't make mud when they overlap. You should get some nice new blends of colour because these inks are translucent. This isn't an exact science, all this moving around. As I say, it very much depends on your particular stamps and card and the design you want. It's about experimenting and trying it and seeing how you get on. I'm going to add one more coral cabana there. Yep, I like that. And I'm going to have another Bellini at the end. And I'm going to have another Bellini, and I've got two Bellinis bang next to each other, but that's okay because I'm going to bring some tiara down as well. I just want to kind of finish off each side with the same colour. And I want some tiara down this end as well, I think. So now we have a rather bouncy, jaunty, colourful row of candles. But what if you haven't got candle stamps? Well, have a rummage through the stamps that you do have and find something interesting that could masquerade as a candle. So I've got this paint swipe here, which I think might do the job. So I've got my paint swipe here. I'm going to put it at the bottom so I can do some repeat stamping. It's slightly narrower at this end, so I think that'll make a good top to my candle. I do want to leave some room for some flames, though, which we will do in a tick. The candle stamps that I've just used were photopolymer, so they stamped really well first time. 
This one is a silicone stamp, or silicone rather, and they don't always stamp brilliantly first time with water-based inks, but this one's is doing a pretty good job, so I might only need to do two. So those are angled in this direction. Now I'd like to angle them in the other direction, coming in from the other side. Now we will move that up a little bit and overlap with the orange and I think we'll do some tiara. I'm not going to slide it down, I think with, with fewer stamps I'm going to do them individually rather than repeating them. I think maybe just three of these. Because these colours are translucent, it really doesn't matter what order you stamp them in. Yellow over orange is going to be the same as orange over yellow. Right, let's do a coral cabana, I think. If you've got more than one stamp that can double up as a candle, then you can always do two different stamps on the same card. Yeah, I think that'll do. I think that's plenty on there. So we'll do flames in a minute. I've already got a mucky fingerprint on there, but we'll deal with that later. But what if you haven't got anything that we'll do as a candle stamp? Well, if you've got candle dies, you can make your own stamps using craft foam. And actually, you don't even need any candle dies such a simple shape you could cut with scissors, and I'll do that in a tip. I've taped my dies onto the foam to keep them still, and I'll cut them. So I've got one solid candle and some candles with little holes punched out of them. So this one's got hearts, this one's got stars, and this one's got stripes. I'm going to leave the stripes in that one, I think, for now, at least. And to stick them on my door, I'm just going to add some stick glue and that will pick them up and we'll go in with Bellini again. So you can see how you've got the holes where I poked the hearts and stars out, but you've got some nice stripes here where I left the pattern in. So I think that will do on the Bellini front. I've wiped them off. So they should be clean enough to use. Some of the stripes have come out here because they've stuck to the glue, but that's all right. Get that right in the corner, pick them up again. And now we'll go in with some tiara, I think. There's ever such a slight stamping on there because they weren't perfectly clean, but that's okay. can keep these stamps you could put them with your stamps or you could put them with your dies so that you remember you've got them they're good for lots of uses over and over and there we have some DIY candle stamps right I'm going to clean this up and then do one more take your craft foam and a pair of scissors and cut a candle shape you could put some glue on here then cut your stamp and stamp it like this. Then you could take another bit and create a slightly different shaped candle and make this one a little bit shorter, I think. There's a couple of ways you can create flame stamps from foam. I've just cut this with scissors, that's fairly straightforward. I've also got this leafy branchy die, which I'm going to die cut and then use the leafy bits as flames. So I only need the one for this. That's got a little sort of heart shape cut out of it as well. 
So that makes a little bit of added interest. You could pop that out or leave that in, depending on what you fancy. You could, if you wanted, put different colour flames onto the candles. So you could put the Bellini flames on the tiara candles, or you can just do the same. And you can angle these so they match the angle of the candle or go in a different direction, it's up to you. But these flames are obviously not connected to their candles, so you could do that with, say, a black pen if you wanted, or you could find a pen that was similar to the stamping colours you'd used, or you could leave it. I think these ones read really well as candles, so I'm not going to put any wicks on there, but I think these might need wicks. And I've got some markers here. This is a Zig Clean Colour Dot marker in Summer Sun, so that will make a good way of joining the tiaras. This is Salmon, which works with the Coral Cabana. And this is a mild liner, a zebra mild liner in, uh, what's the colour? Come on, vermilion. And that will work with the Bellini. It's a little bit darker. But... So then we have four ways of creating a jaunty, bouncy, candle-themed card panel. I'm going to take this one and turn it into a card and then I'll, at the end I will show you the others but I won't do them all on camera because it'll be a very repetitive process. So what I'm going to do here is add some tape runner to the back of my panel and stick it on a card blank. So with something colourful like this you really don't have to do much more work on it. Let's put it the right way up that would help wouldn't it? There's not a lot of white space on this card so it probably doesn't count as clean and simple but I think it's simple. For my sentiment I've chosen happy birthday in a script die cut. I'm going to cut it from gold foiled cardstock but before I do I'm going to add some thin craft foam to the back. All right so I'm going to pop the birthday right in the middle. I need to pick out some of the little bits that are still stuck in there. And just to finish off the card, I'm going to add some of these gold foil sequins that I made using my sequin die. The only downside with this sequin die that I have, which is this one, is it only does two sizes. I really, really love it if it did three. Right, that's this card done. Come back in a couple of ticks and I'll show you what I did with the other cards. Right, I'm back and I have finished off the other three cards. So this is the one that we just made with the gold foil on foam. I did feel that the gold was a little bit lost amongst all those colourful candles. So I cut the same sentiment, but I also cut its outline or their outline from Bristol Smooth card, the one I used to make the panel. I stuck the gold straight onto the outlines and then pop some foam underneath the outline so it's still raised up but I think this little white halo just gives it a little something extra helps it stand out a bit more. For this one I stamped happy birthday straight onto the card panel using Memento Tuxedo Black ink. I then stamped over the top of that using clear embossing ink and dipped it in clear embossing powder and melted it with my heat tool and now I've got a nice shiny slightly dimensional very bold happy birthday that stands out really well against the bright colourful candles and for my last card I used a celebrate die and I die cut straight from the panel so I ended up with this celebrate and then I cut another one from the white card and inlaid it into the gap and then I also inlaid all the little bits that came out of all the loops, etc. So that's a lovely one layer card. It's very flat. You could do that with a gold celebrate if you wanted. You could cover the white celebrate with some clear packing tape if you wanted to make it glossy. Or you could do an eclipse card. You could take this one 
maybe layer on a couple more white celebrates and then stick that one on the top so it's raised up and that would give you a nice subtle sentiment but still very readable from the right angles right i hope this has given you some stamping ideas today if it has please do leave a thumbs up let me know in the comments maybe let me know which one of these cards you might like to try subscribe ring the notification bell and i'll see you back here very soon for another stamping september video thanks for watching Bye for now.